Hello everyone! Welcome back to another episode of Noble Vlogs. Today, I am going to do more of an informational video. There's not a whole lot of information out there about this topic. But, um, I'm going to talk about the auto guidance system on my Windrower. Uh, I put this on here just this year. I never had this on here before and we're finally, finally am able to test it out and see if it works, see if it doesn't. Well, as you guys can tell, right now it's working. I, you know, I'm driving and my hands are off the wheel. And um, I just want to kind of tell you components, hardware that you're going to need for this, and uh, if it works, if it doesn't, do I like it? Am I going to keep it in this? Yada yada yada. So for starters, I'm going to kind of, I'm going to talk about uh, the machine itself. What I'm using is a John Deere 4995 self-propelled windrower. And from factory, it does not have the capabilities for GPS or an auto steer. So from factory, nothing. There was no wiring harnesses for a receiver display, uh, steering wheel, steering valve. There's nothing. It's bare bones. You have to drive it yourself. Why did I do this? I, uh, I went to college for precision agriculture, which that's, that's a deal with a lot of GPS and uh, GPS variable rating stuff and the uh, we never had GPS capabilities auto steer capabilities on our farm up until fall of last year uh, dad and I we uh, went half and half on a receiver and a monitor and so I started beginning to think okay what all can we apply this to we can apply it to our combine uh, for yield maps um, we can apply it to our 8430, 8330, those are already, they already have the uh, the wiring harnesses in there, so we can auto guidance that, and what else? Well, then I started thinking, you know, I, I bet I could get my window to work, even though it doesn't have any of the wiring harnesses, like I've previously mentioned. And so I decided, I started looking into it, and I saw some people, they have done it. There wasn't a whole lot of information out there. Some people have done it, some people haven't. They were looking into doing it and uh, they some some settings work, some don't. So I decided, okay, I'm going to try this. And we had all the components other than we needed an, a motorized steering wheel to steer the machine and the wiring harness. So I finally came across a John Deere ATU 200 motorized wheel. That's what stick this that this is it right here, and a wiring harness that went with it. So I I purchased the items and started getting the wires all routed out to the receiver. Uh, there's a part of the wiring harness that actually comes through the cab, and uh, then the rest of the wiring harness is inside the cab which goes to the monitor and to the uh, steering wheel. So components, you need a receiver. We have a John Deere uh, 6000 receiver. We, you need a display, a display monitor. We have a John Deere 2630 monitor. You need the motorized wheel which I previously mentioned is a John Deere ATU 200. There is a 300 but brand new, they're pretty expensive, and I think I got this uh, for a pretty good deal. Um, and then the wiring harness. So once you get all that together, then you have to take the factory steering wheel off of the, off of the steering column, and put your motorized one on there, get it all hooked up and powered up. Once, that is, once you have that, you need to calibrate your TCM, you go through a process that the monitor shows you, and then it's calibrated. I did all of that, and surprisingly, it actually did in fact work. But it was extremely squirrely. Like it, it was taking, it was trying to get on the line way too quickly, and it just was not. It would just it would go to the line, like it would veer off over the line, and it would overcorrect itself so much that the uh, motor would actually disengage itself. So, I knew I had to uh, mess with the settings a little bit. So I started playing around with the settings and I'll go over those uh, in, later in the video if you guys are interested and want to use my settings for your own setup or and whatnot. 
So I started adjusting my settings, and I think I, I finally thought I had it fine-tuned in, but I wasn't in the field. We, I didn't know how well it was going to react until in a real field environment. So we had to wait a little bit, and we finally started, oh, finally started cutting hay, and most of our fields, we cut with the pivot tracks. So mainly in a circle, like you guys saw in the previous video, we are going kind of at a curve, compared to, like, say, if you're planting, you're going straight back and forth. Or like I am right now, I'm currently doing a straight track. I'm going just back and forth. And it seemed like it was still pretty squirrely, like going around the circle, it would veer off and then come back over. And so I had to adjust the settings a little bit more. And it seemed like, okay, yeah, this is, it seems like it's pretty, pretty tight with the line, but it could be better. It could also be worse. I noticed though, every single time that we were going up a hill and then we would crest that hill and then start going back down, it would always either go in or it would go out a lot. Like it wasn't having enough time to react. And so I still need to fine tune that I feel like. But all in all, when it comes to the curve on flat ground, it actually did it pretty well. And I had no complaints, although it was skipping a little bit and there was still kind of a weave here and there but it was doing its job. It was auto guiding with the curve. Now straight track, like I said, is just straight back and forth. There is no curves and it seems like it's doing a very good job at it. Uh, side hills though, it is a little bit, uh, it does go off a little bit and you do leave some. I'm not gonna lie about that. Uh, again, I could probably mess with my settings a little bit more and try and fine tune that, but uh, I just really don't have the time right now. I just want to get, I want to get hay cut on the ground drying because we are already kind of behind. And so it, uh, it is working. Like I said, it's, it's doing what it's supposed to do. Uh, settings wise, let's see if I can pull it up. Guidance, guidance settings, advanced. My line sensitivity tracking is 120. My line sensitivity heading is 120. My steering wheel speed, you can't change that. It's set at 190. Um, my acquire sensitivity is at 115. And my curve sensitivity is at 75. And that is for the wind rower. There are, I could also adjust it for tractor, combine, but using it in a wind rower, that's how it has a wind rower. So, yeah, except in the straight track, it's doing perfect. Curves, I had them set a little bit different. I think I might have the curve track. Uh, I may have bumped it up or bumped it down a little bit from straight track. I don't know why, I just, I was just messing with settings, trying to get it to, uh, trying to drive a lot better. So, and I have it, I have my offsets set in, all that offsets, you have to measure specific distances between the header and the tractor of the wind rower. Um, and I have it set at 15 feet. My header is 16 feet, but 15 feet because like I said, it weaves a little bit. So if you don't wanna miss a whole lot, have it at 15 feet and then it'll, if it weaves in, it's not gonna leave any. If it weaves out, you're our, you're not taking a full swath, but it's not the end of the world. Do I like it? Personally, I do. I do like uh, having auto guidance on here. It gives me time. I can focus a lot more. Like come, like coming up to a, say a badger mound. Badgers they kick out a lot of dirt and a lot of sand. I've actually plugged the header with a bunch of dirt before from a badger hole. And so not not being or not having to constantly monitor, steer, look over there, or I could look over there, and I could just constantly be on the lookout for gopher mounts, badger holes, uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, so yes, I do like having the ability to auto guidance. I am not mapping though because there really is no 
yield mapping capabilities on wind rower and I think I would need a header switch in order to actually map uh, in order to map the field which I do not have some aspects though uh, they do they are lacking like that right there some for some odd reason my motor uh, my uh, my steering wheel keeps on kicking out for some reason, and I'm not, I'm not quite sure why. It keeps on giving me uh, some kind of warning on screen, but it's uh, right away when I like when I try to look at it, it just immediately disappears. Like it's just I don't know if there's like a back connection or uh, what's going on. So that's one downside of this. There are some downsides to this. One downside is, like I said, on the curve track, you have a lot of the you have a lot of wheat compared to say the straight track. Straight track, although on on side hills, it does uh, it does weave quite a bit. Oh, it's really kicking out. This is this, this isn't this is a new development. Like usually, it would kick out and then uh, uh, hit. I'd restart it and it would work perfectly fine, but for some other reason it's just not one to not want to stay engaged all of a sudden. But like I was saying, um, on side hill street track it does it does go out and it misses some sometimes. And so that's not spiders. And so that's not the best. You are you're leaving crops sometimes, but it's minimal crop you're leaving minimal crop on the in the field and so it's I feel like it's not that big of a deal in my opinion um, the curves though when it gets very bumpy and you're going uphill it does tend to really weave a lot and I mean like with the same that I had it was weaving a lot so that's one downside of it you're leaving crop and you're uh, weaving a lot. If you don't like the weave, then it's probably not for you. But I'm going eight mile an hour and it's holding pretty steady right now on flat ground. When it comes to slowing down though, like so say if there's a pivot track or you see a hole coming up uh, and you pull on the hydrostat back very fast, the wind rower will actually veer to the right uh, when it when you pull back on the higher stack very fast and uh, I don't know if there's something it just has to do with something with the oil flow going back to their tank and not supplying the motors and so that's one thing like I in this field there was quite a few pivot tracks that were pretty deep and I didn't want to go flying through them and so I would pull back and it would go it would start uh, missing some and not correcting right away and so that is a downfall so there are some factors that yeah there it's it's not perfect not by any means like compare I've never I've never ran an integrated GPS on a wind rower before like the I know John Deere's W W series wind rowers they uh, have they have integrated the auto steer into them but for my purposes in my opinion, I think I'm going to go ahead and keep this in here. I know I'm kind of just rambling on about uh, stuff, but it's it's not a bad setup by any means at all. We are running SF3. We do not have RTK capabilities. We don't have the radio on the uh, receiver, but uh, SF3 is actually doing a pretty good job with holding a line and corrections and so far. This thing is struggling now. I think we're almost done with the field. I know I'm kind of just rambling on about um, how much I like it or whatever, but it's it does its job. It's do, it does what it's supposed to do. And like I said, there are some downsides to it. So if you are looking into this, uh, do I know there's not a whole lot of research out there, so I'm just I'm trying to help out as much as possible. Uh, if you have any questions, leave comments about it. I'll try and answer as best as possible. I'm I'm new to this. I'm new to having an ATU uh, in the machine. I've never had an ATU before. Uh, I've only been around integrated 
uh, equipment. I just want to help you guys out a little bit. Uh, if you are interested in uh, using auto guidance on a wind rower that does not have the capabilities from factory to uh, to use auto guidance. I hope I answered some questions for you guys. Uh, if you have any, any other questions, uh, comment them. Uh, Comment them down below uh, and I will try to answer them uh, as best as I possibly can with what I have to offer. But that's going to do it for this episode guys. Uh, it's just I know it's just kind of more of an information type video but there's not a lot of research out there about this type of thing and so I just wanted to make a quick video about it uh, saying just what, what I have experienced. So I uh, hope you guys Stay tuned for the next video. See ya!